Hi, I'm Mark Darren, uh, designer on Tales of Monkey Island, and you're listening to the audio commentary for Episode 5, Rise of the Pirate God. Uh, I'm Mike Stone, uh, designer on Tales of Monkey Island. I did nothing on this episode but uh, watch it getting made while I worked on Sam and Max. Hey, this is Ryan Jones. I'm the concept artist here, and uh, I drew a lot of stuff for this one. Nice. Uh, I'm Jake Rodkin. I directed this episode with Mark. And this is Dave Grossman, the design director and general layabout. So Mike Stanley just lied to you. He actually wrote a huge section because I got uh, I caught up in, in writing. I needed some help and gave him the whole so Treasure right Hunter there. section to write, and he did all of that. So there. Oh, yeah. I guess I did write something. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a blur now. This is the episode that everyone worked on, inclu- yeah, including true. half of the Sam and Max team. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> there is there is a pretty decent-sized pig pile on this puppy. Please take me to the crossroads. Oh, this is uh, episodic gaming uh, at its finest. The, the uh, old Grog XD thing was, was going down in the news while we were working on the series, and we actually managed to work in a reference in that, uh, in that soda machine right there. Yeah. I think we accidentally made two Grog XD references this season because it, it's one of the things that can randomly be on Guybrush's crew farm too. So we love we love Grog XD. <laughs> if you don't know what that's about, look it up online. There's a funny story about that. I love how Guybrush looks as a ghost. Yeah, that was all Jake. Made Guybrush cool and see through. I originally said no bones. I think that's silly, and then you did it anyway. I, yeah, there had again, to be bones. Awesome. I really wanted him to look course, the yeah. same as the concept yeah, art from the first game of Ghost Lechuk with the... And, and you were right. Yeah, I was right. What? <laughs> Wasn't there originally a creepy hand sticking out of the side of that pile of gold? Yeah, there was a hand holding a torch. Murray? <laughs> it made no sense. Goodness. Not that I'm scared of Murray. Murray's a punk. You hear that, Murray? This episode was definitely the uh, the hardest <laughs> one to write. Uh, yeah, by the time we got to this Franklin. episode, we had uh, kind of reached the climax of the story in the previous one when Guybrush got killed, and uh, our, uh, our plot synopsis on paper was just kind of Guybrush comes back from the land of the dead and kills LeChuck. Right. <laughs> it, it, with, with, with every series that we do, we'll plan out the season and we'll we'll be pretty detailed about the plans for the first couple of episodes and and when we and then we hit, we get to the end and it's like oh got to start uh, writing these individual ones and meanwhile the end of the season is kind of very loosely planned in, in that way and then we finally get to episode 5 and we're like oh wait, wait there's some work we forgot to do it has to be a game we need to wrap up all these plot threads no I mean, uh, no, it works like a well oiled machine at all at all times. What? Death must have scrambled your noggin. LeChuck killed me. Desage killed you. In in the fourth episode, when uh, Morgan whispers uh, something to Guybrush at the end, and we put it in an explicit director's note of, she says something unintelligible that Guybrush will misinterpret as Desage killed me, and then I left it to Mark <laughs> to actually figure that out. And he punted it back to me, <laughs> so I ended up writing a really horrible, horrible line about what to explain it away. That was good, though. I like the way the uh, this in-sword compliment sword fight came out. I know but early on when we had just started producing these, I had made the statement, we're not doing any kind of insult right. sword fighting. And uh, people questioned that, and I stood by it, and I wasn't planning on it. And s- somewhere along the line, somebody mentioned that we would be fighting two people at once in insult sword fighting. And I liked the idea, so I worked really hard to try to make it work. And, uh, and not make it overbearing as well. Yep. But then, even then, some people said, oh, insult sword fighting's back, but it was so short in this game. So, yeah. It, it was an homage. Yeah, puzzle. I thought that was great. It, but it worked really yeah. well. I liked it. <laughs> He just wanted to kill me, huh? <laughs> Aye, that makes sense. Smaller men quiver at my unmistakably masculine swagger. The way I wave this sword around, it's like I'm a little boy. Believe me, you're all woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm useless. We also talked about having that guy with the missing head have his head wrapped up in bandages and only half a mustache in a cast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's supposed to be really messed up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think it's because people were concerned that he would look very similar to uh, another another male character in this scene. 
<laughs> who's sitting right next to him. But, uh... Morgan, right? Yeah, yeah it's Morgan. Is that a good idea? Or not? What? No, no, this is just my reputation. She's lying. It's not just her reputation. reputation. <laughs> <laughs> we went back and forth a lot about how subtle to make this scene, I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, There's a lot of bits in this where, where I had written it kind of out completely, not really intending to keep it that way, but also not necessarily having the time to edit it, but you guys helped jump in well, and uh, yeah, everyone, <laughs> pull everyone back beat it up. When, it, uh, when it was o too over and made it where it should have been. But I mean, looking at people looking at people who have played through it, some people oh, no. thought that, you know, some people caught on to the, the fact that it was independence and not reputation. Some people some people didn't, but only some people hated it, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the hardest things, though, is judging, like, how is the audience going to generally receive this and, and, and where is that line beyond which we're just insulting their intelligence by spelling everything out right. too, too explicitly? Yeah, we probably shouldn't have cut the secret of Monkey Island out of the script, though. No. Yeah. I love the fact that we made a <laughs> genuine <laughs> voodoo crossroads thing with a Monkey Island theme. Yep. And the fact that he poked it with a giant Q-tip. Yeah, and the fact that it makes a weird kettle drum sound, which not everyone liked. I liked that it sounded like, for some reason, the crossroads sound like a crusty metal garage door or something. Get over here. I love the way the art direction went in this episode. It, it got that really dark, scary feeling to it. The Chuck chip is, is amazing. I, I kind of wish we had had some of these designs in the earlier episodes, but the fact that we didn't made it even even more amazing when it came showed up here. Well, yeah, Ryan painted, uh, or you did a pencil yeah, sketch yeah, of the ship, and then, and then Derek, who did a lot of our lighting, just came in and painted it just looking like the Look most it, crazy. Like badass. Yeah, it's awesome. I broke your spirit, not your back. Is it great? Well, Chuck walking is funny. Little legs. <laughs> I've got little teeny pirate feet. Oh, yeah, we got skeleton minions back for this as well. Yes. Just, everyone can see that. I just thought I'd say it. <laughs> That's an important thing. I also like the fact that the crossroads open and he just totally misses the ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> the, boom, the yeah, that original was... animation of that was very disturbing yeah when the sponge <laughs> went into the but yeah. the the director's notes for that was just like LeChuck says something and then the sponge is in the crossroads rip it's like what I got a bit big on the director's notes do the, do the minions parts. do it do we just model a trebuchet he throws it apparently. he throws it <laughs> he's LeChuck what's going on here guy brush This weapon that was designed to destroy me will and Many times I wrote in the director's note a giant battle ensues with cannonballs flying and skeletons running around everywhere. And just that, at that point, just left it up to the animators. We got a fair amount of stuff in, though. Yeah, I was I think really surprised. We shall slay her together. Make me your demon bride. What? what? My demon bride. Kind of what was that big voodoo skull head from? Uh, that big voodoo skull head was on over the top of the Chuck's throne in uh, in his fortress in two, and it's right. also over the door of the captain's quarters in three. So for some reason, he likes that big old voodoo skull. <laughs> <laughs> and then Elaine becomes scary goth chick Elaine, <laughs> which, which the internet seems to be really fond of. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I know we had to fight to uh, to get that dress on her as well because we were just we were it was, pressing the budget uh, yeah. at every corner on this episode. It's like, what do you want? Well, we want Lechuk to throw Guybrush around the ship. Uh, we want <laughs> six skeleton guys who can get a sword fight. Also, Elaine has to wear a dress, which is really hard to do, and we need a dog, which we've never had before. So, uh, Lady Boo, let's not be hasty. <laughs> and Elaine has to spray Guybrush with a root beer and turn him into a skeleton. And that has to look amazing. So what's what's oh. the problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all fine. See, it's all here. It's all totally worth it. How my body get back yeah. here? Oh, in the Night of the Living Dead guy brush? Like, who decided to texture him that way? Like zombie guy brush? Well, we knew we wanted him to be textured like zombie. But you mean like you mean like the the super super like dried out crusty? Yeah, because he looks like Night of the Living or yeah or De Dawn of the Dead the original like yeah. the, the I, that zombies from that. It was probably Jason who did the. Yeah, that yeah. I love it. 
Yeah, it's good. And then he's got his zombie walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Jason or Derek. I know Derek put a lot of work into the texture of this as well. Yeah. Rotting body again. I can touch anything I want. So get ready to be touched. Touched. <laughs> to death. <laughs> <laughs> we went back and forth on that how zombie like that walk was going to be and how. Yeah, it just looked weird for a while because it was too good. <laughs> yeah, and it made you walk very slow. And there was a lot of walking to do in this episode. <laughs> there was, yeah, it's one of those ones where they're just at the end of the day there was accidentally maybe too much, but there was. It didn't seem like it didn't that seem much like it on paper. Yeah. I, I had it all mapped out and I could just point at things, but I forgot that he had to walk there. Lesson learned. It's a good creepy yeah, walk. Creepy, oh, but the best thing is about the show. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Winslow easily became my favorite character to ride for. <laughs> and that was like uh, him too. The people on the forums kept looking yeah. for more Winslow, so it, like his original part was meant to be smaller. Yeah, yeah but, well, yeah, he wasn't in four, but then it was like, if he's in five, he's got a. Oh no! It was originally it was originally Elaine who showed up on the ship. Yeah, yeah. And she'd learned about this stuff from the Merleader. Yeah, yeah. But then we and then got it was like Elaine and all of the make Elaine bird. evil and leave her on the ship. And then Winslow, for some reason, just knows Winslow's got to gets to have his hand solo moment. It's yeah. good. And much better to have Elaine be kind of more central to this. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. It got also, too convoluted having her be on the ship and then escape and then show up again. Yeah. yeah. Sean Vanneman w- kept wanting Winslow to die in that scene as well. He wanted, Wins- <laughs> he wanted Winslow to pass on the information and then just take a bullet. No, no, and then, no, well, no. the idea was that he'd then sort of end up like the old man in Treasure of the Sierra Madre and sort of be <laughs> with the Mer people as they nurse him back to health. There is nowhere you can go where I cannot find you. <laughs> and Winslow got, one I think. One more chest to open up with your hook. <laughs> just one more. <laughs> Yeah, Winslow got his personality in uh, in episode two Who's, thanks to uh, uh, Dave way, Grossman prodding me onto that. He'd, I had a bunch of lines for, so, or some of the scenes were kind of static and there weren't a lot of jokes going on. And he's saying, "Pump it up, make it, make it funny, make it funny." You just kept telling me to make it funny. <laughs> what, what scene was that that I was telling you? Pumped me. That was when uh, when Gabbers first got off the ship and was going into the town, and Winslow's just like, "Don't forget to get your mask fixed." And he said, "That's not funny. Make it funny." <laughs> See, that's what the design director gets to do. <laughs> and I, I'm not actually responsible for making it funny. Just, Whose oh, idea was put some funny in there. Increase the funny. <laughs> that's, I think Sean and I might have. I don't know. Or are you? I don't know. The, the came voodoo lady in the clearing design. was just that was an extra thing that just. Hi, Brush. How? The voodoo yeah. lady. She brought me back. The voodoo lady? At, at some point, we had talked about the voodoo lady speaking through an animal. I think it was the crabs first. The crabs were first, right? And then we added the forest clearing to, cause just to have one more location and to give Guybrush some time to talk with the voodoo lady before the story was over. Oh, this is Nick Herman's cutscene, and you can tell because of the shots of four hundred thousand things flying through the air. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> On my favorite Winslow shot of the series. Elaine is mine, my demon bride, to make me. I think at some point the uh, that last puzzle involved climbing on those uh, frozen tridents that were stuck yeah. in the air. Oh, jeez! Mm. But uh, it was complicated enough as it was. Well, the original version of this puzzle was just. Guybrush is in the afterlife. LeChuck is jumping back and forth, and you close it. Was that it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's and then, it. and then it turned into like lethal weapon. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. you're right. There was not really a big thing at the end originally, and and th- this episode didn't really have a centerpiece puzzle. So he worked hard on getting that in at the last minute. Yeah, that was another one of those. Also, yes, <laughs> after everything had already you, been budgeted. You thought out. this episode was over budget? Well, uh, <laughs> on five minutes of animation of characters throwing each other. <laughs> nice callback on the buttercup too. Yeah, that's good. You can temporarily destroy my body, Elaine, but you cannot damage my spirit. I almost threw in one more. Uh, I'm holy this, <laughs> but but it was weak. But then, well, Mike got the the last good unholy this. No, before. he had the best one. So, 
the one after this what was lame, so it went away. <laughs> get that sword. Look, we can kill a Chuck, but we have to find a way to take him on and go to Where did she get that sword? <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> She got it there in the crossroads somewhere. Yeah. I know where she got the sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were actually telling me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back for you, lass. We did a lot of rewriting on the fly in this episode, which made uh, ended up that we had a lot of extra dialogue that never got in here, which could almost make an entire other oh, yeah. episode. <laughs> There's <laughs> the secret additional Monkey 105. Oh, yeah. It won't make any sense, which is why it's not in here. But there's a lot of it. <laughs> Can we just put it on the DVD? <laughs> Where is it? I think we should. Oh yeah, we gotta do the thing with every character just sitting in, in bleachers doing a table read of all the cut dialogue. Guybrush! <laughs> <laughs> the epicness of Guybrush getting a living bejeebus beaten out of him is, is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, this was sort of like... Uh, like, you know, we had a human LeChuck who was goofy, and that was kind of a reflection of LeChuck sort of has trended towards being a sort of goofier and goofier villain over the over the entirety of Monkey Island. After, like, yeah, now we thought we thought it'd be cool to just make him a straight up jerk again. Yeah, and, and had to be that way. S O B. Yeah. But just no one likes this guy, but he's so nice, <laughs> or at least he's like funny. Yeah. One of my favorite things is reading on the forums how people don't like to play this segment of the game because they just feel so bad about Guybrush getting beat up. <laughs> and every well, time they do something, they just feel really bad. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me smile. <laughs> Uh, so the Chuck got his horns back, but didn't get the tusks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not those easy tusks. to uh, make people feel bad in a comedy game and still have it be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like the Guybrush trying to make lame jokes after every beat. Yeah, he still has his little one-liners, and he's still <laughs> doing the most stupid puzzle solution to get out of this situation. I'll make it. Yes, give me a big enough lever, and I can... <laughs> I can't compliment Dominic enough for uh, his performance yep. throughout and the level of uh, emotion that he was able to put into this goofy character. And then there's the most indulgent callback ever of the, yeah, the pot, pot on head. Pot on head. <laughs> oh, and also Dominic is uh, extremely good at rhythm-based games. <laughs> he oh, yeah, that is guy like, amazingly good at He destroys everyone at DDR and Taiko drumming and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know about DDR, but I've, he, like he's obsessed with Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero, that's yeah. the one. It's instrument stuff. Yeah. He's a big gamer. That's good. Oh. This was something we knew we wanted to do very early on. Uh, from I think it was, came up in the Ron Gilbert discussions. The whole I initially started with an idea from the perfect storm of him just floating out in the ocean by himself at the end of the game, having won but being all alone and drowning. And uh, we kind of went from there to this point where he sacrifices his last shred of life. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the idea about the ring being kind of the final thing in the game, the final puzzle bit that you had to do, is also one of the ideas that came out of those sessions with Ron Gilbert. Is yeah. it over? And that pun will not localize. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. I thought we learned that lesson 20 years ago. Oh, well. Yeah, when you use a monkey wrench on the center of the crossroads. Exactly. Anchor, direction, sacrifice. A lot of people were actually really affected by the the end of this, which I thought was cool. I read a lot of comments from people who, waking up in the middle, it worked really well. It was good. Yeah. I don't know. I like that. <laughs> the end <Yeah. laughs> Wow, what a rush. And I noticed there was a lot of people commenting hey, that they thought it would have been interesting if it had just ended before this part where he just yeah. Was yeah. stuck in the afterlife. He's, he's beating the chuck, but he's all alone. Man, that would have been a depressing ending, though. That would have been the artsy-fartsy indie ending. <laughs> I think it would have been a cool ending, yeah. but I also think that you can't quite end in it like that. So, yeah. <laughs> A lot of people wonder the merit in it. A lot of people wonder where, how he got his hand back as well. Uh, they sure do. Well, you know, when you come back from, uh, from, 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 
from the afterlife, you get come back whole. Yes. Or something. He's, he's basically guy bra- a he's, guy, he's guy brushed the white now. Yep. It's an enti- <laughs> this is an entirely new body. We were talking about that. We 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 pushed the limit too far, but it was like we talked about very briefly of him coming back wearing the Monk Allen one clothes and without his goatee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's actually but, lots and lots of discussion about the hand and when it was attached and when it wasn't attached and how it was going to get stuck back on and whether or not you should have it when you yeah. come back from the... Uh, should we, t- should we, we talk about how we not. dropped the ball on the hand? <laughs> no, we we, 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 well, I mean, we kind of decided somewhere in the middle that because we knew we had to get a hand back on him. We knew we couldn't leave him without a hand, but we also were kind of in, wanted there to be an act. After a, f- a, few, a couple episodes in, we decided, wouldn't it be really funny if... The severed hand was still around? Yeah. I still... Whoa, the credits are over, so I can't talk about it. Well, you'll no, never know. Oh, no, we haven't end. gotten to the... Uh, oh, that part. Yeah. Eh. That is the end. I'll talk really quickly about it. Just the, in Monkey Island 2, if you have a ghost, uh, a, a body, and a living piece of them, those are the three ingredients to bring someone back from the dead. Yeah. And we have Guybrush's ghost, ah. Guybrush's body, and his living hand. Yeah. Right. And we have there spirit gum that. as well. So, you know, so it goes. I know he wanted to, at some point we talked about him putting his hand back on using some kind of weird merfolk glue. Yeah. That's, that line is still in as well. That and the reefs both stayed yeah, in. Yeah, they're still in. Yeah, it's interesting. There are setups in there for things that got cut from the, from the series. Can we still see the hand here? His hand, his she has hand, the hand still exists. She also has DeSinge's pox distilling machine, but I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> what does it all mean? Now go. There is much work to be done before the tides of destiny shift again. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> Whoa. Is that it? Thanks for listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>